and welcome to our plate and frame heat exchanger sizing tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at our web-based sizing tool for the AccuTherm product line and showing how this tool can be a valuable resource in your projects. Whether you work for an engineering firm or just want to explore some basic sizing options for your facility, we've got you covered. With that, let's jump right in. First, you're going to want to head to hxrx.com. This will take you to the landing page of our sizing program. There are options for registered users to gain additional access, which we'll explore the benefits of later. But for now, let's click on Login Without Registering to get started. After accepting the disclaimer, you're ready to begin sizing. Let's start with some basics of heat exchanger sizing. You'll notice that there are fields to enter the properties of your hot and cold side fluids. Typically, you'll have a load fluid whose parameters are more critical, and a service fluid whose properties are more malleable based on what the facility will have available. Generally, you will want to enter the load side flow rate, entering temperature, and desired temperature out. Then, you will want to enter the service fluid properties. The sizing tool will only function if five out of the six available fields have been completed, with the final field allowed to float. By entering the service fluid properties last, this will ensure that you are not floating a critical value of your load fluid. Let's say we have a tank of water at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and we want to heat this water to 100 degrees for use in some other process, and we need 100 gallons per minute of this heated water. So we will enter 100 gallons per minute, entering at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and leaving at 100. Now let's also say that we have a boiler that can supply 120 GPM at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, by entering five of the possible values, the final value is allowed to float. And we can now determine the return temperature of the hot water for the application at 114.8 degrees. With our thermal requirements selected, we also have to enter a maximum pressure drop that we're going to allow. The default is 10 psi for both fluids, and we typically do not recommend dropping below 5 psi. These pressure drop values can sometimes influence the final sizing even more than thermal requirements, so you want to make sure that you're not oversizing your heat exchanger by selecting too low of a pressure drop. With all these values selected, we can now size our exchanger. We can also adjust our operating in maximum design pressures, but we'll leave those at the default for now. After the sizing calculation is completed, you will see a list of potential exchanger options arranged from least to highest cost. You'll see the model size, the number of plates, the heat transfer area being supplied, and the number of passes, or how many times the fluid is redirected inside the unit. Options highlighted in yellow are single pass selections that fit in a single exchanger. In some applications, if there are options that are not highlighted, highlighted they are either multi-pass arrangements or require multiple identical units to meet the design. In this example, we can see that an AT10 with 26 plates is probably going to be the best choice. If you click on the frame PDF, you'll be taken to a generic drawing of that model. In this case, we can see that it's a carbon steel frame denoted by the C designation. We can see the available connections on this model, as well as the overall dimensions of the unit in question. Let's go back to the select selection page and select this AT10 and go to the summary page. Here you will see all the information about the selected plate, including the number, number of passes, as well as the material and gasket material that are defaults. You'll see the frame details, including design pressure, design temperature, the overall dimensions, and the weight of the unit. You'll see the sizing details that we selected earlier, as well as the LMTD of the thermal design and the U-value that the unit is supplying. And finally, you'll see the default connections that have been configured for this unit. For any modifications to the default designs, you'll need to register for an account with us or send in your request for application engineers to provide an alternative design and price. 
And that's it. For now, you can quickly size a basic plate and frame heat exchanger that will suit your needs. For additional design options, including plate and gasket materials, frame materials, alternative fluids, and other options, you will need to register an account with us. There are pathways on both the main landing page and the model selection page to request registration. Registering an account will also allow you to save your previous selections and go back to them whenever you need to. Thank you for your time. We hope that this video and our sizing program are helpful and beneficial in your future projects. Please do not hesitate to reach out for any of your plate and frame heat exchanger or other heat transfer needs. Our application engineers are ready to be the experts on your next project. Have a great day.